I have clicked on the Global Tropical Area for February the 20th, 2024, as is always the case in these videos. The Alphatex pressure or mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look at your local other office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got two systems to talk about today. We've got Tropical Storm Leonar here in the South Indian Ocean, newly named, and this is our system that will threaten Mauritius and La Reunion over the course of this week. We're also going to be talking about ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln, as that system over Australia could potentially reform of the coastline of Western Australia and may be a threat for another landfall along the coastline as we go into uh, this weekend and into early next week. That'll be towards the end of the video. I'll leave a timestamp to that if you want to skip ahead to that portion of the video, but we'll be starting off with tropical cyclone uh, Leonor here. So here's the system right now. This is the water vapor loop over the system. You can see where it is. Uh, compared to all the other land masses. This is Madagascar here on the western side. This is Mauritius and La Reunion, and this is the island of Rod Riggs. And uh, this system is continuing to develop. It does look pretty healthy, all things considered. Uh, the uh, system appears to now be a tropical cyclone. We had some questions last night where I talked about where we really didn't have many scatterometer passes. But at least from what we can tell right now, this is likely a tropical cyclone. You can see that this scatterometer passed from not too long ago, a few hours ago, depicted a pretty well-defined low-level center beneath the clouds, maybe a bit extended to the east with a little bit of a trough axis, which might be just an effect of some of the convection that we've had going off to the east of the storm. We've had a lot of convection over the past day, just firing east of here, just given all this divergence aloft. And this is likely helping to lower pressures east of there and might be contributing to a little bit of a trough-like axis here, extending east of the storm. But all things considered, this storm is doing pretty well. Uh, here's a microwave pass that we got not too long ago, and you can see that this is a pretty menacing look. We've got this large curved band wrapping right into the center of the storm. Uh, this is a good feeder band for deep tropical moisture. And you can see it trying to wrap around the center of circulation, which appears to be here in this pass. And this is really going to be, have to be watched over the next couple of days. We really will have to see how does this develop. Does it close off and sustain itself and is it able to intensify in this? Or is it potentially disrupted by some increasing shear, maybe some dry air? You can see there is sort of this blue notch here in the eastern side of it. This could be maybe some indication of some mid-level dry air getting in. You can see there's a lot of greens here, which indicates moist upper levels, but doesn't really indicate too, too much moisture below that. And that could be suggesting uh, some mid-level dry air that could be getting sucked into the storm. You can see that we have a little bit of an erosion of convection. We have all this white here, but compared to earlier in the run or the loop earlier, you could see we have a lot more blues here on the western side of this low. And this could be some of this mid-level dry air trying to eat away at some of the convection. And it's possible that uh, given this microwave pass that some of that is trying to get in. And uh, does that actually disrupt the core? We'll have to see how that goes. Hopefully we can get a little disruption because what happens now is very important for track. I'm going to show you now the GFS ensemble track plot. You can see all the members here, uh, which is about 31 in this track envelope, sort of like this, with the main track being here, tracking just e east of Mauritius, which is right about there. I'm going to keep Mauritius uh, outlined there because there are two camps with this track uh, envelope here. You'll note that we have a lot more oranges and even some reds showing up in the coloring here indicating a stronger storm on the western end of the guidance envelope here, while you have more yellows here on the eastern side of the envelope. Uh, this is telling us that if the storm does manage to intensify some, the storm would likely make its southward turn a little bit earlier. Remember I talked about yesterday how one of the big things to watch for is when exactly does the turn to the south occur. And there's several features uh, that will d d dictate that. There's differences in the steering pattern, how it develops, differences within a storm, does a storm maybe wobble a little bit, and some of those are small details that we will never be able to pin down. But something that we can tell you is that if the storm does get maybe a little bit stronger here, like with this uh, microwave pass here, if it manages to sustain this eye and intensifies a little bit, we could see the storm make that turn a little bit more. And the reason for that is because we have, like I talked about yesterday, 
an upper ridge that is going to be developing to the east of the storm. And on the western end of this, you have more northerly flow. Well, in the low levels, you still have some westerly flow from the departing trough that I noted yesterday in the mid-level flow. If the storm does get stronger, it's going to feel more of the flow that is pushing it to the south. Eventually, it's going to to push it south regardless but if it gets stronger earlier it will feel that flow more because as it as the thunderstorms tower up into the troposphere you can sort of see this here in the cross section from the gfs you can see that as the thunderstorms intensify the storm they get taller throughout the troposphere and you can see it as you have westerly winds down here at the surface so this is trying to push the, th the thunderstorms towards the west but aloft you have more northerly winds and when these thunderstorms extend way up here, they're going to start to feel that more. And the storm is going to take the mean track of that. So when you start to add a little bit more northerly flow here, that's a combination of the storm getting stronger, it's going to start feeling a flow towards the south more, if that makes sense. And so that's why we see in this envelope stronger storms further west because they make the, tr the turn uh, quicker weaker storms further east as it takes a little bit more time for it to make that turn and that's going to be a key thing to watch do we get this eye to be disrupted potentially by dry air maybe a little bit of shear that ridge will be starting to shear it as it takes place and that could potentially push maybe some of the mid-level dry air further into the eye or does it manage to sustain itself and we actually just get regardless the storm coming you know down towards mauritius even with the shear now, in terms of the overall track consensus today, the track has been about in the mean track of the GFS. You can see this black line there. That's about the mean. And the consensus today between most models is right around there, just around um, the Mauritius, uh, the Dylan of Mauritius. You can see this is the GFS operational run, and this is the storm track coming right into uh, Mauritius virtually here and it is intensifying as it does so the European not as strong though it does have a weak bias but you can see the track is there just about along that uh, mean uh, loop there on the GFS ensemble tracks and now something that that does disagree with it the half a is one that does disagree with both of these models it is a little bit further east now exactly the reason why it's a little bit east Maybe some decoupling between the low level and the mid level center in the runs. Uh, you can see that the plot that I'm showing you is uh, the mid level relative humidity. So we've got the contours here showing you the surface pressure, and the wind barbs are showing winds in the mid levels of the troposphere, so not at the surface. And what we've got is a surface low here and the mid level low right about here. And this may be attributed to some shear. The uh, half say, which I'm trying to find the sounding, I think I meant to get the sounding, but I can get it here, uh, right here on the run. But you can see that we have a little bit of a shear here. We have the easterly winds, or westerly winds, sorry, from the trough, but there is a little bit of a shift with that uh, northerly wind from that developing upper ridge loft and this creates a little bit of a shear you can see if you know how to read a photograph that we've got uh the winds in the low levels coming out of the west but as we go a little bit above the mid levels we start to get a wind shift and we've got actually about 10 knots of flow here in the mid levels and upper levels of the troposphere and this is creating a little bit of wind shear and you can see it actually gets to moderate values here on the model and this causes a little bit of tilt with height and i've talked about several times how the tilt can be a little bit unfavorable maybe that's the reason why the uh, the half is a little bit further east and we'll have to keep a close eye on how the system develops and if this actually does occur now regardless the system does manage to become pretty strong on the half model you can see that eventually we start to see the system become coupled it's no longer tilted and we get a lot of deep greens focused around here and there will be some shear. You can see at times the northern side of the low seems to get a little bit eroded. Like I talked about yesterday, there is going to be some shear from this upper level ridge that is developing to the east. And this will be putting some shear here. Now, something that I did not talk about much yesterday, as it really didn't seem as much of a possibility yesterday, but it seems to be potentially more of an issue tonight, or I guess this morning local time, You'll note that we ha also have this trough digging in here across southern Madagascar. And you'll note that ahead of this, we've got a lot of greens here showing up on this map and in indicating some accelerating winds uh, with uh, this area, which is a little bit of a jet ahead of the trough. 
it is possible that this is positioned in a fairly optimal way relative to the storm, that this favors a fairly well-built uh, poleward outflow channel. So you can see all these winds streaming away from the storm pretty fast to the south. And if this does happen, this could potentially allow the storm to intensify maybe to a significant degree. You can see the half model does do this. It gets it below 960 millibars before the shear really starts to take its toll on the system. And of course, this is potentially a big issue. Imagine this storm is a little bit further west on this run. You've got that intensifying storm coming right into Mauritius. And exactly if it's over Mauritius or if it's just east like the half model uh, is on this run, we can't tell you that this far out. There's a lot of things that can change that, and it's certainly a possibility that we have an intensifying cyclone on our hands for Mauritius. Now, the good news is the PAFS is a little bit alone in this idea of a storm this strong. Now, the GFS does agree with it in the sense of an intensifying storm. You can see the pressure there down to 975 millibars, which could certainly still be very significant here. You don't need a storm very strong to have it be significant. And this could obviously cause a lot of issues in terms of wind, storm surge, and heavy rainfall across the island. That's just some potential, and there's a lot of variability to this track and intensity forecast. It's very sensitive with the jet interaction. It is possible that this jet helps it and we could get some intensification by the same time it's possible that maybe this is not posi positioned optimally and the shear just becomes too much and maybe the storm just struggles we saw that with uh i still forget the storm name that came through uh la reunion several weeks ago where that one was forecasted to have a jet interaction but the storm was a little bit less optimally placed to that jet and i think the jet was a little bit weaker on uh, in reality and we had that shear take the toll on it, and we were locked out in La Reunion. We didn't have a big storm coming in to our region, but even then we did still have significant impacts. So I'd say that's the key message today for Mauritius and La Reunion. The storm is uh, intensifying right now, at least from what I can see, and the storm is likely to intensify some over the next few days as it makes that southward turn. There's uncertainty on exactly where the eye is going to track, but keep in mind, La Reunion and Mauritius are still within the realm of possibility for the track, especially Mauritius at this time. And at least right now, the consensus has the center of the low coming right over the island or just east of it. And this could be a significant impact for the island. And so that's something to keep in mind. And there's also a little bit of potential there for significant intensification. Whether or not that actually occurs, we'll find out uh, in due time. But we can say right now, in terms of tr in terms of intensity, it is likely to become a cyclone and that can still be very significant for the island. You can see here on the forecast cone from uh, Mauritius, or sorry, not Mauritius, I keep, I keep messing up the names, but the, the Mateo France forecast office in La Reunion, you can see the track here uh, putting it to a cyclone on final approach to Mauritius, and you can see the large wind field associated with it as it approaches the island. Cyclone force winds are on the island on this forecast, and uh, in La Reunion, you may be looking at the cone and thinking, wow, I might be out of the threat zone. Don't uh, fully think that right now. It certainly has been a good trend for you all in La Reunion. But this track cone is where the center could track. And keep in mind, this is also very big. So even if the storm maybe comes a little bit west of Mauritius, even if it doesn't come right over you, you can still get very significant impacts. And there is potential that the system sort of just meanders around here for the next several days after it passes Mauritius, and that could potentially bring some impacts to the island. And reminder, you don't need a big, strong storm to have significant impacts, especially with an uh, island like La Reunion with uh, heavy topography, and you could get some heavy rainfall there as the storm stalls. But very significant storm on the way, potentially. I'll have further videos over the course of this week and make sure your preparations are underway in Mauritius and you're staying tuned to your local weather office and local emergency management for the best information on what to do as the storm approaches. I'll leave links to Matteo France and the Mauritius Meteorological Service in the description. But now we're going to move to the Australian region as we have ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln uh, across the Australian 
uh, but just across Northern Australia, really. Uh, they didn't really cover this system as it was a really short-lived system. It formed right on the coastline in the Gulf of Carpentaria and made landfall uh, last week and has been moving across Northern Australia over the past several days. Now, the system is forecast to move west more and is forecast to come offshore of Western Australia in a couple of days. And by then, the environment will be favorable somewhat for some development or redevelopment rather of this system. Here's a GFS 850 millibar vorticity or spin plot showing you where the storm is centered here across Western Australia. And one thing that we're really going to have to watch for is exactly how much does this low weaken in its final time over land. The GFS is on the idea of this low weakening quite substantially. You can see that we don't really have, by the time it comes offshore, a very compact area of low pressure. It's weakened into a very broad low here as it comes offshore. And this is natural. This is what happens when storms come over land. But what we'll have to watch for is how well defined is the exact center. We have models like the European showing the system being a little bit more well defined when it comes offshore. And that makes a big difference. As the system is broader on the GFS and not as well developed, the system is going to likely face some struggles. There's a lot of dry air across this part of the ocean, and you can see that in this satellite loop. You can see there's not a lot of thunderstorm activity at all going on across this part of the ocean, and this is just a bunch of dry air. And this is forecast to persist over the next few days, and you can already see it impacting the system right now. But if it's very broad and much weaker than it is even now, it's likely going to face some issues with that dry air. Now. If the system is a little bit more compact and a little bit more strong like the European shows, it might be able to fend off some of that dry air. You can see here on the European, it's a much more compact and could still be argued to be a tropical cyclone here, at least close to it on the European by the time it comes offshore. Now, it does still have some dry air to deal with. You can see the European at times does show it maybe giving it some trouble. But because it's more well-developed on the European, it does actually manage to keep it's center going and we get a well-developed inner core structure and the system intensifies pretty significantly on the European uh, before a landfall in Western Australia as we get into the latter half of this week and into this weekend. Whereas the GFS being much weaker, the system really struggles to consolidate and we really don't get much development uh, at all from the system uh, as it starts to move along the coastline of Western Australia and dive towards the south. Now, something about the European, it, it does have a tendency to keep systems over land a little bit too strong. We've had several instances before where the European has been a little bit too aggressive with systems over land. Alongside that, the European is an outlier here, and it is a good model, but for something like this sort of a signal for potentially a significant storm intensifying upon landfall, you would want a consensus between models and between the main three, the GFS, European, and Canadian, the European is alone in this idea. The GFS and Canadian show the system struggling. Uh, is it a possibility that the European solution does verify here? Absolutely. If it does remain you know, as compact as the and, and well-developed as the European does show, it's a possibility that the system could do something like the European is showing. But right now, I wouldn't say it's very likely possibility right now but it will be something to watch and the beer of meteorology do give this a high chance of redevelopment off the coastline and this could absolutely still bring some heavy rainfall across the coastline areas and we could get some localized flash flooding and if it does intensify that could add some wind danger on top of the wind or on top of the water issues uh, but I'll talk about this one more if we need to in future videos. But again, our main focus this week is going to be with Tropical Storm Alienar. And I'll have more uploads, like I said, over the course of this week on the system as it does develop. But for those in La Reunion and Mauritius, make sure you're taking the necessary precautions and stay safe ahead of the storm. Again, I'll leave links to the weather offices that I mentioned at the top of the description so you can go to their websites and get the latest information. And uh, once again, I'll have more uploads over the course of this week. Uh, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.